Building a house involves a considerable amount of rough carpentry. Handyman Diaries, episode 10. Today I've got a, a stair replacement, like a stair tread replacement and some trim to start out, and then a few jobs throughout the day. Carpenters on a framing job work as closely as possible to exact dimensions. Now I think I mentioned it before, but my deal with doing trim is I go one piece at a time. I measure it, cut it, bring it in, it's always a little bit too long, bring it back out, cut it again, and I just find that works to get those pieces really dialed in. It involves careful measuring and cutting to get a reasonably accurate fit. In the woodworking field, there are jobs for workers of all degrees of skill. This requires very careful, accurate work in order that all parts will fit exactly. There are definitely multiple ways to attach a stair tread, but I screwed this one down. Uh, I also uh, created a slightly bigger hole at the top. That is for my plug. So the uh, stair tread's oak, I got some oak plugs, and you can see the hole here. That hole there will be filled with an oak plug, and I actually didn't get video of that, but I just glue those plugs in, then cut them flush and sand them down. And if you're doing this job, you've never done it before, just make sure you nail or staple or tack your trim to the wall. If you attach it to the floor, it's gonna pull out of the wall, but if you attach it to the wall, that floor can move around and everything looks good. Next up, lunch. My favorite part of the day. And after that, I've got just, I think, two jobs. Uh, some lights to install and I forget what else, just some after lunch type work stuff. All right, now lunch was good, but I had a little bit of extra time, so I pulled out my old tiller and took a crack at the garden. A certain degree of skill is necessary to operate the machines, however. This is a garden that we just have been using this one summer, and I wanted to turn it over. It's a beast of a tiller. That thing will beat you up. But anyway, I ran the tiller. The garden is like 80 feet long, and now it's all tilled. And I don't know what I was thinking. After lunch, I actually had a furniture assembly job where I put this shelf together. And then I had a ceiling fan thing. And the ceiling fan thing was kind of interesting. The ceiling fan was working just fine, but uh, it wasn't switched. And, and that just wasn't working for these guys. So I, instead of pulling the whole fan, I just kind of reached in and uh, tapped that wiring up on top. And most ceiling fans, if they're done right, they've got two wires. They've got like a hot wire and a switched wire and I just swapped those out and it was all good. To those well qualified, it offers a very satisfying occupation. It snowed a shitload out there. Well, I've got a couple jobs this afternoon. Uh, the first one is fixing a door jam that uh, these guys broke they're moving something so I've got the wood glue in the truck I'm gonna put it by the heater and hopefully it'll be kind of warmed up uh, so it'll flow so I can do that repair I was definitely slipping around a little bit out there so put in four-wheel drive and all was good the roads were a mess they were just totally a mess this day but uh, I made it out to a couple jobs. Uh, one was this toilet uh, replacement job where I pulled a couple of toilets. And this is my method for pulling toilets. I don't know how you do it, but I pull the toilet and stick it right in a trash bag, like a plastic bag. That way all the dripping and stuff goes into the bag and you can haul it out of the house. Now these toilets were uh, sitting on plastic flanges and one of them was cracked. I don't know why anyone uses plastic flanges when they're stainless steel. So I actually retrofitted these guys with stainless steel and I put uh, new gaskets on them. Uh, these are not the wax gaskets, but these are the foam rubber rubber gaskets, and I think they last a little bit better. Then I did what plumbers do everywhere. I got up on the toilet to weight that baby down and screw it in place. Uh, 
All right, now this is totally a side job back at my place. I was trying to get a little exercise at home and somehow I ended up in the shop in my shorts freezing, uh, cutting a new pull-up bar. I was gonna order a pull-up bar on Amazon. I was sitting there looking at it, just about to pull the trigger on it and I was like, wait, why don't I just make a pull-up bar? So I got some oak, uh, put some oak blocks up on my doorway I hung the pull-up bar and I was in business for pull-ups, doorway pull-ups. One of many ways to build balance and poise, along with skill, strength, and general physical fitness. I've got a water heater job next. You like my cheater bar? It used to be a pull-up bar, but now it's a cheater bar. The last couple of days have been just a little bit weird. Uh, mainly like trips to people's places to uh, check out their jobs and then write them up a bid. So I've only had a, a couple actual like cash paying jobs in the last couple days. Uh, what am I doing right now? Going to fix a leaky water heater. Um, leaky water heater drain. Shouldn't be too big a deal, but you know, once you tear stuff apart, sometimes it gets kind of crazy. Faucets develop two basic problems. They can drip through the spout, and they can leak around the handle. Alright, so I started off by shutting off the cold water supply to the heater, and then I opened the hot water in the house. That way, the hot water heater had a vent so I could drain it. And I started out draining it into a bucket. I was going to use the hose, but there was no floor drain in this basement. So I got the draining uh, initiated. Then I shut off the gas so that a water heater wouldn't burn itself out. And I got a little impatient uh, with the draining speed. It was just kind of slow. So I actually pulled the valve and yeah, that got a little wild. Um, water was kind of flowing. I was using the bucket brigade and before too long, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, I had that water heater uh, pretty much drained. The last couple gallons always take longer than like the first 40 gallons. You know, you're kind of waiting for it to dribble out. These things will just get nasty. You just get a lot of minerals and stuff in there. So cleaned it out, attached the new one that was all taped up and everything, snugged it in place. Then it was time to ease the water back on. Uh, check for drips. And you'll see if you leave that hot water tap open, you'll see it just kind of burbles and bubbles and a bunch of air, like all the air from the hot water heater has got to flow out before finally you get water flowing. Then it was just a question of firing up the water heater again. You know these water heaters, it's just kind of like a big pot on the stove. You know, it seems like a technical piece of equipment, but you've just got a burner and a big old tank full of water. It's, um, it's kind of old school. All right, next I had a, a bathtub shower ring to replace, and this was cool. This was like an old vintage -y bathtub with like brass fixtures and stuff, just gorgeous stuff. And I had to uh, reattach the existing system to the wall these uh, braces had kind of blown out. So I put some good mollies in there. Uh, this is all lathe and plaster, you know, old school kind of early 20th century stuff. And I got that brass ring all attached, looking spiffy, and that job was done. Uh, next up, another toilet. Uh, this one I installed a couple days ago, and the dang uh, bowl is leaking. Just, you know, like one drop every 20 minutes or something. So I gotta go out there, uh, pull the bowl, and put some new gaskets in, see if it'll seal up. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, that, but I just hate the way toilets are designed. I just think it's so screwed up. You've got the nastiest stuff you're flushing in the entire house, like the totally nastiest stuff. And at the base, there's like a wax ring or rubber gasket seal. Nothing, nothing glued in place, nothing screwed in place, and then you have this 1.6 gallon tank of water suspended over the toilet and again it's just 
it's just sitting there on some rubber seals with your, uh, your, your screws. It's just crazy. Um, plus, the whole toilet is so fragile. This whole porcelain thing. Man, they just like, they just crack so easily. Anyway, I uh, clearly hate toilets, but my job is to go fix one, so that's what I'm gonna do. I was just about to get to my next job on time. Uh, this one was a little bit funky. Uh, the dude who lived in this house previous to the current owner had sealed up the doors, you know, full on silicone on the screen doors and the doors and locked them in place and everything. So my job was to get the door working again, literally like opening and closing again. And it didn't take too long uh, to cut through the silicone and uh, other adhesive and stuff he'd use and then clean it up. Uh, same place, also needed a couple receptacles changed. I guess all the plugs were just like falling out of the wall because these receptacles were just like old and shot. They were still working, but you know, the plugs just wouldn't stay in the wall. So uh, a couple bucks, get a new receptacle, get it installed and you're good to go. And then at the same house, there was this busted front door that I had mentioned before. It had a cracked jam and was missing a hinge and all of that. I pulled it off the hinges, uh, stripped out a bunch of trim, and then quickly realized it was kind of a bigger job than I had time or materials for. All right, I had to call it quits on that door just because the, the jam's funny. It's got, a, it's got just a funny leg with some uh, bevels and whatnot. So I need a different jam leg to replace it. You know, the, the dilemma with that thing is, do you replace the jam leg, you know, cut it out and try to clean it up and tune it up just right, get the old door working? Or do you just replace the whole door? You know, you can buy a front door for like 150 bucks, 200 bucks with a jam and everything, put a whole new door in there. Um, I'll talk to the dude, see what he wants. Um, I kind of like replacing old stuff, you know, keep the door going. It's kind of a nice baronial heavy door, but anyway, we'll see how it goes. You could really go either way. And then dang it, if at seven o'clock I didn't end up uh, driving back to one of the houses I'd already been to that day to fix that leaky toilet I told you about and uh, fixing it again because it just kept on leaking. So it was one of those nights out on the road, there was actually a improvised roadblock because uh, some of the uh, farmers in my area were clearing the fields that night, man. Like late night work out harvesting corn. All right, thank you for checking out my latest episode of the Handyman Diaries, where it's not necessarily how to do it. It's just kinda how I did it. I'll see you in the next one.